In today's video, we're going to compare Harley Davidson's Road King Special and the Indian Springfield Dark Horse. And we're going to see which one comes out on top. Now, before we get started, I have demo reviews of both of those bikes on my channel, so I'll link them in the description if you want to go check those out. I'm really excited to compare these two motorcycles because these are probably one of my favorites from both brands, both Harley Davidson and Indian Motorcycles. These are the two touring motorcycles from both Indian and Harley that, that I'm going to kind of call the naked touring bikes, and meaning they don't come with the large fairing. And they're both very similar to each other in both design and features. But first, let's quickly just take a quick peek at the Harley Davidson Road King Special in terms of what it comes with. The Harley Davidson Road King Special in 2024 comes in at $24,999. It features their Milwaukee 8 114 engine, putting out about 122 foot pounds of torque. It comes with their stress saddle bags, mini ape handlebars. It even has dual disc front brakes, a passenger seat, and the seat height comes in at a pretty comfortable 26.4 inches. It features a six gallon tank for those long rides. It even comes with cruise control. And overall, the wet weight of this motorcycle is about 800 pounds. So that was the quick and dirty overview of the Road King Special. Now let's take a look at the Indian Springfield Dark Horse. In 2024, the Indian Springfield Dark Horse also comes in at $24,999. It features their Thunderstroke 116 with about 126 foot-pounds of torque. It comes with their slam bags, which are also remote locking. It does feature their mid-rise handlebars. It comes with ride modes, dual disc front brakes. It comes with a 5.5 gallon tank. And the seat height is a little bit lower, coming in at 25.6 inches. And just a tad bit lighter than the Road King Special, coming in at 791 pounds. And it also comes with cruise control and a passenger seat similar to the Road King Special. So both bikes on paper are very similar to each other. I would say the Springfield Dark Horse has a little bit more bang for the buck, it does give you a little bit more features for your money with the remote locking saddlebags and the ride modes. But for all intents and purposes, they're, they are very similar. But let's dive in more into both of these bikes. Now, first we have to start with the aesthetics of both of these two bikes, because that's what's going to draw our attention first. Now, like I mentioned, both bikes are what I'm calling the naked touring bikes from both Harley Davidson and Indian. So they both share a lot of similarities. Both come with those mid-rise handlebars and large floorboards, which make them comfortable. Two up seat and saddlebags, a large nacelle on both of the headlights. They both have that blacked out engine and pipes. So they share a lot of similarities and they both, you know, have the same design philosophy, if you will. However, the Road King Special at the time of this video comes with four different color options. So if you want to stand out a little bit more against the sea of, you know, black cruisers, the Road King Special might be the way to go. I think you could argue that the Indian Springfield Dark Horse uh, has an edgier design, especially if you go with their matte black uh, paint. It's just all murdered out black, which is a very popular option for, you know, younger riders. It definitely gives you those Batman vibes if you're into that kind of thing. The Road King Special, by comparison, feels a little bit more subdued and I think practices a little bit more restraint in their design uh, design philosophy. So as always, aesthetics is going to be a personal choice based on you know what you prefer. But for me, I think the Springfield Dark Horse is a little bit more unique and I personally prefer the all blacked out look that it has going for it. In terms of features and price, I think we can all agree that the Springfield Dark Horse also edges out the Road King Special considering that they both come in at the same price point. But the Springfield Dark Horse does give you a little bit more in terms of like the remote locking bags, uh, the ride modes. And I'll say that the Road King Special doesn't even come with a USB charge port, uh, which is a big miss. It's also worth noting you'll get a tad bit more torque from the Indian Springfield Dark Horse uh, by about four foot pounds of torque. But really, that's not going to make a, a big difference in real world applications. But maybe that's offset by the six gallon tank on the Road King Special versus the 5.5 gallon tank on the Indian Springfield Dark Horse, allowing you to go a little bit farther uh, on the Road King Special. But again, we're at the point where we're kind of splitting hairs here. At the end of the day, I don't think it's really going to impact decision making all that much. Overall, like I said, I think you're splitting hairs at this point between two almost identical bikes. It's highly unlikely that someone is going to choose a motorcycle based on ride modes, you know, saddlebags or a difference of 0.5 gallons of, of, you know, fuel tank capacity or four foot pounds of torque. Like, I hardly doubt that that's going to factor in on the decision making. So then if these bikes are very similar, uh, how do you decide which to go with? 
Well, I think it comes down to about three things. Aftermarket support, dealership support, and the ride quality. So let's talk about these three. Now the aftermarket support and the dealership, you know, support differences between Harley and Indian has been covered before on this channel and several others. So I won't belabor the point, but Harley does come out on top by a long shot when you're talking about aftermarket parts and the number of dealers across the US. So once you get a Road King special, you can really build it out uh, to your heart's content. You can even go as far as putting on a fairing uh, on the bike if you want to go that route. Uh, you literally have so many different options to take with the Road King Special. So if you're into building and modding and building even, you know, a, a bike that's better than the one that you bought right from the dealership, the Road King Special might be um, the better route. So that's aftermarket support and the dealership support. Harley clearly wins. Any Harley that you compare directly with Indian, I think Harley is going to just uh, consistently beat out until Indian motorcycles can get to that point where they have uh, plenty of aftermarket support and plenty of dealerships to support the buyers. But I'm hoping that, you know, at some point Indian will catch up and that this is going to be a completely different conversation. All right, so let's talk about ride quality. Um, in terms of ride quality, I will say, you know, both are fantastic bikes, no matter which one you choose. They're both extremely smooth in terms of like the engine. Um, they both feel very nimble for an 800 pound motorcycle. Uh, they both feel very planted on the road for that reason. And shaving off 100 pounds from their, you know, other touring motorcycles, I think that's going to make uh, a big difference in terms of ride quality. But I will say that the Road King Special to me felt much better and was just overall for me a more pleasurable ride. I can't quite put my finger on the reason why, but the Road King Special just felt so much more nimble on the road. Once you get it moving, it was just easier to dip into the curves. I really had a good time on that bike. To me, the ride quality was just like so buttery smooth on the Road King Special. Again, if you want to go check out my demo review of the Road King Special, uh, it, the link will be in the description. But but to me, the Road King Special would just felt a tad bit better than the Springfield Dark Horse. And maybe it's due to the reason that it might be four, about four inches shorter than the, uh, the Springfield Dark Horse. I think the Dark Horse comes in at like 99 inches, whereas the Road King Special comes in around like 94, 95 or 94 ish. So maybe that's the difference, but I, I, I couldn't tell. To me, I know what I liked and in terms of ride quality. And for me, the Road King Special uh, definitely beat out the uh, Indian Springfield Dark Horse. Uh, in terms of power, you know, and how that contributes to the overall ride quality, you know, both felt very adequate. I mean, they have almost the same amount of torque uh, from their V-twin engine. So that, to me, that didn't make much of a difference, but it was the overall ride quality when you're sitting on the bike and just cruising that I thought the Road King Special outweighed or outperformed the Springfield Dark Horse. All right, so let's recap for a second. To me, the Indian Springfield Dark Horse uh, wins a couple of categories like the value, obviously, and looks, and the Road King Special wins uh, three categories in terms of aftermarket support, dealership availability, and ride quality. But with all of those things aside, all of those things on paper, you know, setting them aside, if I really just had to pick a bike today that I have to buy between the Springfield Dark Horse and the Road King Special, I would go with the Road King Special. To me, the Road King Special was one of those bikes um, that really stood out in my mind when I went to test ride it. It's one of those bikes that I still kind of can't get out of my head in terms of like, wow, that bike was just so special. It rode so nicely. Don't get me wrong, I would still be happy with the Springfield Dark Horse, but there was something about that Road King Special that really just spoke to me. Um, I felt like I kind of quote unquote bonded with the bike. And I mean, I think maybe at some point in my near future, a Road King Special might be in the plans. Who knows? Now, don't get me wrong. The Road King Special isn't perfect. Um, I'd like to see that price come down just a little bit, considering that the Road Glide and the Street Glide aren't that much more. But that would be my really only gripe with the Road King Special. But to me, no matter what bike you decide, I think we can all agree that these two bikes are just really special bikes from both Harley and Indian. And I don't think you could go wrong with picking either one. That's personally my take, but I would love to know what you guys think. So let me know what you think in the comments. But for now, I'm going to peace out of here. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.